Movies that have the absolute worst endings. Some movies end with a bang and some with a whimper. Or maybe they end with you rolling your eyes or letting out a heavy sigh. Maybe the movie was that good, but it couldn't sustain the landing. On the other hand, maybe a movie of the jump and thus the feel of the ominous ending was not quite appropriate. Either way, these are the worst endings in movie history. All of them left a bad taste in our mouths regardless of how much we enjoyed the rest of the film. And, of course, major spoilers follow. 1 of 20. Planet of the Apes 2001. The ending of the original Planet of the Apes movie, when Charlton Heston realizes that it has always been Earth, is symbolic. On the other hand, the ending to Tim Burton's remake is incredibly lame. The whole movie is disappointing, but when Mark Wahlberg travels back in time to his world, he finds that the Lincoln Memorial has been replaced by a monkey general. It's ridiculous that everyone goes out. 2 of 20. Man of Steel 2013. You're either on a heavy, miserable Zack Snyder wave, or you've been watching his movies kind of endlessly. If you're in the latter category, Man of Steel probably left a sour taste in your mouth. The truth people have with this movie is that Superman, normally a paragon of virtue, brutally kills General Zed at the end of the movie after destroying a large part of Metropolis in the process. 3 out of 20. Signs 2002. M. Night Shyamalan wrote on the good vibes of the sixth sense and largely unbreakable. Yes, the twist at the end of the sixth sense is good. On the other hand, the end of signs the invading aliens are revealed to be defeated by water. Yes, they attacked a planet covered in water, which was apparently their weakness. 4 out of 20. Greece 1978. There are a lot of weird things about Greece, especially since so many kids watch it and are fans of it. The ending is twice as strange. First, Sandy decides to completely change her persona to that of a leather bad girl for Danny Zuko who in turn has become a groomer for him. Then they get into a car and it flies off in a movie that had nothing supernatural in it. Do you think this is a bad ending tell us about it, stud? 5 out of 20. 500 Days of Summer 2009. Some people like 500 Days of Summer, but personally we found it unbearable from the beginning. It has so many problems, but the final note is truly an insult to the intelligence of everyone in the audience. After his high-profile affair with a woman named Summer, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character meets a new woman. Her name Autumn of course. 6 out of 20. I Am Legend 2007. Richard Matheson's I Am Legend has been made into several films, although Will Smith's film about the seemingly last man on earth was the first to use the novel's title. It also has the worst ending. Besides the Dark Seekers, the albino zombie mutants, there seem to be few people left on earth. There's a directorial short ending to the movie that's actually kind of cool, but in the I Am Legend movie, Smith's character comes up with a cure for the Dark Seekers, gives it to a few people, and dies. Those people hand it over to the military and all is well. It's all very neat and lame. 7 out of 20. War of the Worlds 2005. Yes, there's the War of the Worlds ending issue where the aliens die because they can't deal with the microbes on Earth. However, this is not the real problem here. The Wikipedia synopsis includes the phrase someone who somehow managed to survive which really says it all. More specifically, Tom Cruise's and Dakota Fanning's characters are able to reunite with Cruise's wife and son, even if the former's house blows up and the latter joins the battle against the marines who are being destroyed. The fact that they are all alive and can easily meet is silly. 8 out of 20. Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom 2018. First, the girl in the movie is revealed to be a clone, 
like many dinosaurs before her. Then, there's the actual end of the movie, when our heroes decide to free the dinosaurs instead of letting them die. This means that dinosaurs roam the earth and overtake cities and nature. It's kind of cool, but the execution is incredibly poor, and the movie it leads to is the worst movie in the Jurassic Park franchise. 9 out of 20 Remember Me 2010 You may not remember Remember Me, ironically enough, but those who do have nothing but trouble in the end. For a largely forgotten film, it maintains a legacy based on the power of its gruesome conclusion. For the most part, it's a traditional romance with a coming-of-age element. Then, our protagonist, Robert Pattinson goes to work and his sister goes to school. The date the teacher writes on the board September 11, 2001. Pattinson's job it's at the World Trade Center. Yes, out of nowhere remember me because a 9-11 movie. It's crazier than it sounds somehow. 10 of 20. Lucy 2014. Lucy basically takes the whole we only use 10% of our brains myth and gives it a Luke Besson twist. That is to say, it's completely insane. Still, even if you are along for the romp, the ending is pretty much insane and untenable. Lucy reaches 100% brain capacity and she, disappears or turns into a supercomputer or maybe a flash drive all we know is that her voice shows up on the bad guy's cell phone to say that she is everywhere now. 11 of 20 Super Mario Brothers 1993 There is a particular sting to watching a movie that ends on a cliffhanger for a sequel that never comes. It makes you feel like you've been cheated out of a real conclusion to the film. Of course, basically everything about Super Mario Bros. cheats its audience, as it's a lousy film about beloved video game characters. And, of course, it hubristically ends by setting up a sequel that did not happen thankfully, in this case. 12 of 20 The Devil Inside 2012 There are cope-out endings, and then there is The Devil Inside. How does this exorcism horror flick end it tells you to go to a website. Seriously, they end the film not with a conclusion or resolution, but to invite you to go to a website for more information on the ongoing investigation. 13 of 20 Identity 2003 Several movies do the this was all in somebody's head all along thing, and every time it sucks. Identity is maybe the worst of the bunch. The movie begins with 10 strangers trapped in a hotel, dying one by one. A murder mystery nope. The characters are all personalities in the head of a murderer instead. Yes, we spent time watching a bunch of not real people dying. Ugh. 14 of 20. Now you see me 2013. Maybe we shouldn't have expected much from a film that is about magicians who rob banks. For the entire movie, we watch Mark Ruffalo's character try to capture the heisting illusionists. Then, it turns out that he was actually the mastermind all along. Also, he's a magician too, of course. In addition to being an FBI agent. Somehow, this led to a sequel. 15 of 20. Knowing 2009. As a Nicolas Cage movie post the turn of the millennium, it's not surprising that Knowing is both bad and insane. Knowing is one of the worst of the bunch, though. At the end of the film, children are loaded onto intergalactic arcs by aliens angels to save humanity. Then, we see the world destroyed by a solar flare. Sure, the Ark saves the kids and takes them to a new planet, but it's all so insane and dumb. 16 of 20 The Grey 2011 Personally, we don't mind endings that don't give you a tidy, definitive resolution. We actually like the ending of No Country for Old Men, 
and even a serious man. However, we feel differently about the gray. The movie feels like it spends the entire time building up to Liam Neeson fighting off wolves. At the end of the movie, he's surrounded by a wolf pack with a knife and shards of liquor bottles taped to his hands. This should have led to a massive, epic fight between man and nature. Instead, Neeson charges the wolves and the movie goes to its credits. That's bad enough as it is, but then we found out there is a post credit sequence where we see the alpha wolf dying with Neeson next to him. That's even less satisfying. 17 of 20 Blazing Saddles 1974 We expect silliness from Mel Brooks. His movies are often quite meta and that's fine with us. Blazing Saddles, though, is a step too far. The movie doesn't really end. Instead, all the actors flee the set of Blazing Saddles to run onto the lot for a big zany fight. There is no real ending, and it shatters the fourth wall way too much. It seems self-indulgent of Brooks, and we aren't on board. 18 of 20 Don't Look Now 1973 some consider Don't Look Now a classic horror movie. It definitely has a mood to it, but as a film it feels more like a sad psychological thriller. Then, inexplicably in many ways, Donald Sutherland's character finds himself face to face with a lady dwarf who cuts his throat with a meat cleaver for some reason. It just sort of happens, and it just doesn't work. 19 of 20 Jaws the Revenge 1987 Jaws is a great movie. Jaws, The Revenge is terrible. For starters, it's about a shark literally targeting the Brody family to kill them off for, well, revenge. Our real beef with the ending the shark roars like a lion. That's what gets this film on the list. At least Michael Caine cashed a check. 20 out of 20 Robot Monster 1953 Robot Monster is considered one of the worst movies ever made. It got the Mystery Science Theater 3000 treatment, a show that showcased many a movie with a bad ending. Robot Monster is maybe the worst of the bunch, though. The Great One kills Johnny and the titular Robot Monster are O Man with a Kalkinator. Blast! Then, he kills everybody else on Earth with cosmic June rays, an excuse for using some old stock footage of prehistoric reptiles. The rise of the reptile is short-lived, because the Great One then uses psychotronic vibrations to destroy the Earth itself. Or so we think. In fact, this was all a dream that Johnny had while concussed. None of that happened, his family finds him, and they all go home to have dinner with a couple of scientists.